Damien, where the hell have you brought me? This is not Will's house in West London. Come on, mate. So this is Kerry Katona's house and she's invited us here today to have a chat about money. And I think it's going to be really good because she's someone who's made loads of cash, lost loads of cash, made it again. So hopefully through this conversation, we can really find out, you know, what money does to people. It's so cool. Kerry Katona, I can't wait to meet her. Let's do it. I told my mum I was speaking to you and she was very oh, excited. Oh, the mums love me yeah, that she, age group. Yeah, she does, she does. Yeah. And, and I think one thing that strikes me is I could speak to my mum, I could speak to my son who's 10 and everyone would know who you mm. are. You're probably one of the most famous people in the UK in that sense. Mm. And that means that kind of like everyone has an opinion on you. Yeah. So what we want to do today is, is kind of hear it from your side yeah. and just give you a chance to have a discussion because yeah. wrongfully, I think the media sometimes... Oh. Oh, massively, especially Cashew. when the news at World was around. Ketamine and chips. Yeah, and that was like that. awful. I mean, that made me feel really suicidal. I can imagine. You know, that made me turn to drugs even more. I mean, what the media got wrong was like they all thought that, you know, I was doing drugs because I was in a girl, but I was doing drugs well before that. You know, I was 14 years of age when we were giving the first drug. She told me it was sherbet and it was speed. So when I got an atomic kitten, like, there's so much that came with me, that when the press found out about it, that was it. And and I made a lot of mistakes and who doesn't? You know, Do you, I'm sure you guys made mistakes, but mine was all in papers. I think it's far more relatable when you've made mistakes. Like with my channel, I sit there and go, I've been in loads of debt, I've, I've messed up all the time. And I think that makes you more relatable and that's Massively, why I want to sit with you. Massively, for me, I think when I went into bankruptcy, everyone just vanished. Right. And all even, the even workers, like even yeah. production companies and TV shows didn't want to work with you because you're based on your success by what money's in your bank. Which is which is bollocks now. I don't give a shit about any of this. I really don't don't care about any of it. Because what one thing I realise is your riches are in your memories you create with your family. Yeah. Because that's all you're gonna take with you to the grave. Not what's in your bank, not not the car you're driving, none of it, not the watch, any of it. I mean, I can afford it, so I'll I'll do it, but I do it more for the kids. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, a lot of people like Damien, they're good at saving, like planning for the future. Mm. I'm just all about experiences. So. Yeah, I'm not saying <laughs> holidays. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not saying I like that. Uh, yeah, holidays, having a good time. Mm. Like, I want to enjoy myself while I can. My, then... rafts, my rafts like that. I mean, it's like a proper penny pincher. Really like, you know. Good influence, maybe. Or do you just yeah, ignore him? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely like yin and yang. Like, you know, he's eight years younger than me. We're just complete polar opposites. Been together five years. Does me bastard head in at times. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also my business partner. So without Ryan, I got back up to where I got up to because he got me a great accountant. He sorted all out. That's what he works in. So he knows numbers and figures and he knows how to do all that. And so, yeah, he's been a massive, he's been a great influencer. But even now, I don't like talking about money. Oh, you deal with that. I'm not interested. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I don't Has that to... been part of the problem for you? Because, you know, people will say yeah. twice bankrupt. H how? Yeah. Like, does, 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 you know? <laughs> I came from, um, you know, living on a council estate, living with me Nana Betty, brought me up most of my life. It's getting my clothes off a jumble sale, you know, and getting like shoes that gave me Verrucas because it was second hand. I remember oh. she got us these jumpers and I tried to sew Reebok on front. <laughs> so oh. I look like everybody oh. else. So I literally went from that. So the next thing you know, um, you were stripping at sixteen. Is yeah. that right? Well, with these fucking tits, who could blame it? <laughs> I mean, that was my get out. Do you know what I mean? So I used what I had. I yeah. used what I got. And I mean, I did get put in Tom King because I had great singing voice, I had a great set of tits, great personality, and I had the looks. Did I can't sing. I'm a great singer, but that that that's that's I know that's why I got an Atomic Kid. Did that change your life financially, Atomic Kid? Oh, Kitten? massively. Yeah, like that one minute I was living in a council flat, um, electricity got cut off. I was working as BT sales advisor. I was also a lap dancer at the same time. And um, next thing you know, I'm in this girl band. And I'm like, this is just crazy. But mm. I never spent anything because it's really weird. Money goes to money. Yeah. So as soon as I became successful, I was getting everything for free. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? And I was just like, I've not spent anything. So I bought a house when I married Brian. I, obviously, we were millionaires. And so I've literally gone from nothing. Because he, he was obviously very successful himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had 13 number ones, West Life yeah. at the time, I think. Um, so I literally went from having nothing to being this girl band to meet a boy band member to becoming millionaires to living this fairy tale life, which it really wasn't a fairy tale life. You've Googled it. Um, <laughs> to the, you know, getting separated, becoming the face of Iceland, becoming a millionaire all by myself, having my own reality shows, the face of OK Magazine, gone. Was that two thousand? Was that two thousand and eight? Yeah. And I read it was. Was it a tax bill? And you you nearly so I, paid all of it off. No, Is so I had right? a tax bill for eighty six thousand pounds, which was pennies to me. Mm. I mean, the contract for Iceland was like three hundred sixty grand a year. 
that was just for that contract. That's not included all yeah. the other deals and all that other stuff that I just got. Just for the that. adverts you were doing. Yeah. yeah. So I was pennies. So I had this accountant called David McHugh, mm-hmm. who got, I got introduced by the ladies from her Pink Ladies who I started working with. And so he started doing my accounts. Little did I know he was a con man. You know, he actually, I'm sure you Googled it, he did time. He's still on the run now. If you put his name in, he's still on the running island, I think, using fake names. So everyone thought, so when I got, Max Clifford rang me up and went, Kerry, going into bankrupt? So I didn't know what fucking bankruptcy was. What do you mean? Was well, you not pay? I said, I've got letters here saying it's all been paid. Oh. And it was all, it was all, it was all fake forgeries. It was all fake. I was like, please just go and search him. Anyway, they raided his house because it wasn't just me he was doing it to. I was only celebrity he did it to. Anyway, they went into his uh, offices and in his ceiling, they went up, they found a big box. It had KK Media from Company's House, KK Amusements, KK, all, all these companies I was not aware. TSB checkbooks, Dave uh, Lloyd's checkbooks, all in my name, did not have a clue. And I lost everything like that in a heartbeat. How did your life change? That You know, like, what was Best it like after? happened to me. Can you explain that? Yeah, I think uh, obviously I had all this money. People were using me. I was buying me mum's love. Uh, I was with Mark Croft. And I just kept thinking, oh my God, how am I going to look after these babies? I had four kids at the time. You know, it was all in private education. I kept thinking, what, what am I going to do? I lost my houses, my cars. And in the end, I went to a boot camp off my head, high as a kite on coke. And best thing that ever happened to me. I went there for two weeks to do like, oh, look how much weight I've lost, you know, kind of thing for Clothes Magazine. Had an affair with a trainer, best thing that ever happened to me. (laughs) Went home, told Mark, I fell in love with somebody else, it's over. Um, And um, I packed my car up and I moved down south and I never looked back. I was there for 13 years. So you find the bankruptcy is good at getting rid of the... The, the people that are leeching I mean, off you. I mean, I think what people who are going through bankruptcy, I know in that moment, sometimes I'll be driving a car thinking, just want to drive off a bridge. Yeah. You do want, you know, there's this shame, this guilt, embarrassment, you know, people look at you differently. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh. <laughs> they can't wait if you want, fall off that fucking pedal still. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're just from a council estate. Yeah. You, no one wants you to do well. Yeah. No one did back then. How did you find dealing with, because most people that go bankrupt, it's not blasted all over the yeah. newspaper. Like mm-hmm. the whole world doesn't find out. So they it can just go quiet and disappear. It, 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 I, I, I don't know how I'm still sat here today. Because the amount of drugs I end up taking, I was having fits, I was embarrassed, I was mortified. I had 40 paps outside my house every day, even before the bankruptcy. Do you know what I mean? It was, I don't I don't know how I got through it all. I don't know, even now, I think, God, I'm so fucking lucky to be here. I'm so grateful, I'm so blessed, I'm eternally grateful. I've got my guardian angel and I'm so appreciative that I'm here. You're pretty resilient as well. You, bou- yeah. you bounce back three times that, now. I think that's because, yeah, I mean, I don't know anyone who's gone from nothing to becoming a millionaire, to going bankrupt, to get a bit back, to going bankrupt again, to becoming a millionaire Walt again. Well, Disney's the only other person that I could name, I think. I think like the second time I went into bankruptcy, it's like, oh, fuck it, so what? I've got my health. You knew you could survive it. Yeah, you thing. can survive it. And it is, it, it, I think I under, I never understood before I went into bankruptcy why people would take their own lives over money. Didn't mm. get it. I was like, it's just fucking money because I had it. And then when it happened to me, I was... I was so suicidal and I would never do that to my kids. Especially when people never. know on the school run and things because like that. Because of what, I, yeah. honestly, the way, the people, the way they look at me, it was just like the shame. Like you've the, got a rash that they want or a disease yeah, they want to stay away from. It was like you think it had some kind of fucking disease that I was going to give to somebody because there wasn't enough money in my bank. It's like, what? So when I die, are you going to go and do my eulogy? Go, she didn't have the latest Gucci bag and she only had such amount of money. No, you're not going to say that. You're going to talk about how kind I am, how nice I am, what a great mother I am. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about memories and laughter and things. You're not going to go about what money was in my bank on my eulogy, are you? Did you and that took me a long time to realise that. Did you find people treating you differently when you made your money back again? I noticed the change when I was honest and open about my mistakes and when I owned my own mistakes. Now, no one's got anything on me anymore because I own it. Yes, I've done drugs. Yes, I've gone bankrupt. Yes, I've got divorced. Who fucking... I don't know what goes on next door. I was telling Damien yesterday... But I'm not going to judge them. Yeah, it must feel quite liberating though. You're like, no one... You can just be honest and just... Yeah, no one's got anything on me anymore, ever. Do you know what I mean? And and that's the only thing I can do. The one thing I will say is scared of losing it. Yeah. And that's why I can never say no to work. And that's why I'm sat here in pain right now when I should be in hospital. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, so I think we, that's one thing I need to work Is that out. how you feel about money then? Are you yeah. scared about yeah. it? I like, think there's that fear, it? which I have to change my mindset because what you put out of the universe, you get. Mm. So there is that fear of it being there, but it's also like you've got to, I think it's it, t- it took me a long time to realise I am not defined by the amount of money that's in my bank. I'm not defined by my mental health illness or my... You know, the coca was doing all, I'm not defined by that. I'm defined by who I am sat here today as a, as a survivor. That, that's, who you are as a mother I'm not, as I'm well. I'm not a fucking stuff. victim. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I can't blame everybody. I can't blame my mum for my child. Or I can't even blame David McHugh. Do you know what I mean? I trusted in people. So I've got to take responsibility for that. No one shoved coke up my nose. No one made me do anything I didn't want to do. Circumstances didn't help and situations and people that, that didn't help. And people took advantage of me, definitely. But at the end of the day, I have to hold my hands up and take full responsibility for everything that happened because otherwise you become very bitter and very angry, which I was for such a long, long time towards Mark Craft, towards Brian, me mom, the accountant. It was everybody else's fault but mine. The world owed me a favour. Mm. Just like, fuck, no one owes me anything. You know, the only person who can change your life is you. Only I can do that. You can't when help me When did you realise that? that? When was that kind of shift? Um, I think the the biggest shift on that was when I separated from my third husband. So it took a long, long time. I think I was about 36. I got into... Um, I got into YouTube videos like uh, Bob Proctor and Les Brown and Lisa Nichols and Oprah Winfrey and Tony Robbins. And I, I got into The Secret and, um, you know... Manifestation. Manifestation. And, yeah. um, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. That's a fucking brilliant book. Um, got, I've got so many books that I really got into. And and that is... I started doing all that with George, my third husband, but he... He expected it all to land on his lap without doing any work. And the right. one thing no one can ever call me for is I'm a fucking grafter. I've always worked my ass off. From the age of 14, I had two jobs. I've never had anybody else's money. It's always been mine. Even when I spoke with Brian, I did all that myself, which mm. people think they don't even know that. I did it by myself. No one helped me. No one was there to help me. I think people would assume you're set for <laughs> life. You're going to get Westlife checks till the end of Absolutely your days. Absolutely fucking not. Absolutely. <laughs> I wish that was the case. Absolutely not. No, I did all, I did it all by myself. I put it for education. Don't get me wrong. When I went into bankruptcy, I did turn to Brian and he lent me £10,000. He didn't lend it me. He gave it me because I was like, look, you haven't helped out. Oh, yeah. And he gave me ten grand for the girls. And that was about it. So T, have you been using Blinkist? I have indeed. Just for context, that's the service that summarizes books down into 15 minute, what they call blinks. So you can basically listen to that instead of reading a whole book. Uh, I'm gonna be honest though, our producer Big Will gave me a discount code. I got a free trial. So. I did not get a discount code. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, yeah, you gotta get, you gotta be in it to win it. But um, I loved it. I genuinely loved it. It was, it saved me a lot of time. What's your favorite blink? The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, mainly because I love to work for four hours, so a week, so it kind of gave me a bit of inspiration. Got a goal to aim for. Yeah, decent. No, I know. I love his podcast as well. Yeah. I, I wanted to test out some books that I'd read in the past that I knew really well. So I, I listened to The Richest Man in, in Babylon and I thought the summary was really good. That's a really basic personal finance book that's like, it's like the gateway for many people. And I think they summarise the key messages quite well because a lot of it's quite like up in the air fairy tale story, really. You, to get the core messages, the Blink was perfect. Um, yeah, Blinkist is awesome. If you're a busy guy like me, a new dad, head to blinkist.com forward slash making money. After 45 day- After seven days, you get 45% off, I think is the deal. Cheers, mate. Appreciate Spell you. Spell Blinkist. B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T. Impressive. Dot com. Yeah. Forward slash yeah. making money. That's us. Yes. Um, <laughs> also the link's in the description. So yeah. if you don't want to listen to us, you can just check it out. Okay. Now back to the show. Let's go. You said um, your mo- earlier. You said your money habits. You grew up like you always used to buy your mother's love, and yeah. you've said before you've bought your friend's love. Do you still have that habit, or have you changed it no, a bit? Absolutely. And do you not. know why that was? Yeah, I think self worth. I know when your mom sits there and she's, um, you know, if you don't want me to smoke this on camera, just tell no, me it's if fine. Okay. No, no, it's fine. Um, I think self worth. I think because of the situations I was in as a child, I was so desperate to be loved. That's why when I did the jungle and I wore all that, I think that's why I became famous. I've always just wanted to be loved. Yeah, that's all they wanted. You know, I had four sets of foster parents, three refuges, eight different skills. Didn't know my biological dad, and and then I met my sister and my brothers at the age of twenty eight. You know, my life's been Steven Spielberg cut right after yeah. shit I've been through. Honestly, I've just finished doing my third 
autobiography. Um, and we've got script writers who took over the first book because they want to turn it into like a film show kind of thing, which is brilliant because it, it, you can, I just did the audio book for my third book and I read it out loud. I went, you can't fucking write this shit, <laughs> don't you? And it's like, I kept thinking, have I really been through this? It, it's like, it goes from one crazy thing to another crazy thing. It's just, it's like, this is not normal. Yeah, it's not boring as well. It's, it's good, definitely good not film. boring. Yeah. Nothing phases me. No. Unless it comes to my kids. That's that's when I get panicky. And I've definitely got, I've got health anxiety anyway because DJ's daddy died when she was five. So I, I, I model coral DJ, my youngest. So I'm always like, I don't ever, I've never lost anybody who's been that, Obviously, I lost my nan, and yeah. then, then obviously my husband, then my auntie dropped dead. So I have this fear of, um, I have anxiety a lot of the time over the kids, making sure that they're all all right. Can we talk about the kids? You were, you were yeah, they're, mother yeah, of the year twice, weren't right, you? Minute. Is that right? I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, like, I just dropped mother of the year, believe and then you're like, that what? shit because of what you read. Yeah. They think it's so plausible. Where's the kids on social services? Go, well, all right, okay. Fucking joking, they're in a cage under the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you were celebrity mother of the year twice. Twice, no one's ever done that. No. How yeah. do you, how do you, with that's, money that's and the children? Shit. No one, that, that was a shit. You know, I'm honored, you know, I, but I think at the time it's just who's a, a mum. Do you know right. what I mean? I was, I'm not bothered about what anyone else thinks about me. I care about what my kids think about me. Everything I do is for them, the ungrateful little bastards. Yeah, where's a Mother's Day card? <laughs> On it, that is what really upset yeah. me. And because they've never had to, I took our Heidi to um, where I was brought up, rough as fuck, honestly. It really, my kids don't talk like me. They all talk very well, you know, very Southern, very posh, and, you know, they're all very well educated. And, you know, I'm dyslexic. You know what I mean? Academically, thick as fuck. Business wise, shoot wise, I'll knock it all out of the park. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But my kids are very well, very academic. Yeah. I think what it is, I took our Heidi to where I was brought up, and it's really, really rough where I was brought up. And I went, get out and have a while. Look at that round. Is it Warrington? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not, not all the Warrington. No, no, no. But <laughs> <laughs> when I was brought up, yeah. it was. Um, so yeah, my kids have been, and this is a, a lesson I've only recently just learned, especially because of Mother's Day. I've given them everything. Too much. Too much. They're spoiled that, almost. They're yeah. not spoiled. They're not spoiled. Like you meet, you, you go, they're a credit to you, Kara. And they are a credit. You go, they're, they're a credit to you, those are, Kara. Do you know what I mean? But I do say to them when we leave the house, I'm the only fucker who embarrasses his family. Are you listening? <laughs> 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 my job, my name. Just remember that. <laughs> Um, so I think I, I have, I made a rod for my own back because I've given him, and I've got no shame in the fact of like, like he came in here Christmas day, I had 24 hours off because I was doing panto, I was up till four o'clock in the morning wrapping all the presents, gets up at seven, get the kids up and the piles of presents for them. I have no shame in that. They're my kids. I'm Every parent does that. Yeah. yeah. And then I do remember one time Molly and Lily was at the scale, the, the private school, and I've got like every car under the sun and we live in a house, got cinema room and all that kind of shite. And uh, our Molly and Lily came on this one time and uh, there was um, dead snotty or up their own ass about so I thought, who the fuck do you two think you bastard? Get in the car, get in the car. <laughs> and I took him to a refuge. I took him to a refuge, which I was an ambassador for at the time, to show them like, you know, I was in I was in refuge as a kid. I remember being nine years of age. It was Christmas morning, and um, we just got rehomed to Viol Viola Street in Manchester. And it was Christmas morning. We had, I think we had a sofa, dining room table. We had no TV, no decorations. And the people from the refuge knocked on Christmas morning with a bin bag of secondhand stuff. And I was so grateful. I like the little smelly thing, love art thing you put in your knicker drawer that makes it smell nice. The lavender, like, lavender yeah, ones, yeah. yeah. And then like a, a can of corned beef and, and things like that, you know. And I was just so grateful. I, I've always, like nothing, like if someone said, can I drive a Lamborghini? Yeah, it's okay, don't bother me. I, I'm like, if I- Can I drive your Lamborghini? Yeah, I'm like, oh, <laughs> don't bother me. Oh, Whereas Ryan, who hasn't had that kind of yeah. stuff before, he's got the Aventador. They all smell in the garage. Fuck me, I won't even look at the thing. Do you know what I mean? Because I think we're different people out of respect. I like to bring people on the journey with me. Yeah, take it for a ride. So I like an old dead, but just better. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And well, that's that, why he's here. Yeah, <laughs> he's, my, he's my man. I'm like, get involved in the podcast. Yeah, like, share the success. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? And that's so. what it's all about. What's the point in having all this? You can't share it with anybody. Yeah, exactly. I'm all about that. Do you know, that. Do you know what I mean? Build like, my friend, up. or I want to make sure I'm looking after her. And, you know, she's involved in my life because she's been there for me. But 
these the only people who are in my life are Ryan, Dawn, and my kids. That's it. I go to work, come home, go to work, come home, go. That, that that's it. Obviously, I've got, I have got friends and stuff, but I don't have a social life. Yeah. I don't go out at a night time in bed by eight o'clock, me. I don't. When when did that change? I think the older you get, you do change. Yeah. But I noticed with a lot of my friends. From back in the day, I thought, God, you're still doing the same thing. You know, if you want to change your life, you've got to make changes in your life as a person. You keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same results. I kept getting married. I kept having these kids. I mean, I've been with Ryan five years and I think about getting married. I thought, oh God, it scares her. She tells me I don't want no more babies. Yeah. Absolutely not. You know, that's it. So I'm a different person as well. I had to really work on me and learn to love myself before I could let anybody else love me. And that was at the age of 36 after I split up with my third husband. With your whole journey, like the movie, the like Hollywood movie that it, that it is, when do you think you were happiest? Like the whole time? I think now. Yeah. That's great. That's good. I That's think good. now. I think, this, I think this is a more, oh, don't get me wrong. I've still got issues. Yeah. And my kids have issues. You know, Max has always been saying, I'm from school, he's got ADHD, you know, I had a falling out of my 20 year old. We are, we're arguing. You know, there's always going to be shit because I've got five kids. So they're now bringing their dramas to my life. Me and Ryan, we all have our arguments. But I think this is the most content I've been with who I am as a person. And I won't let anybody else define me. It's not my business what you think of me. Mm-hmm. It isn't my business what anyone thinks of me. You have your opinions. It's, it's not my business. I know who I am. And I can't go, oh, I went through this and I went through that. And poor me, it's like, deal with it. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's like you carry on going about the past. It's like being in a rocking chair, going back and forth and back. You're not going anywhere with it, love. You're not going anywhere with it. Deal with it and move on with it. So you think you've got a thick skin to it now then, the scrutiny? Oh, I think, I think, I think, yeah, it's like water off a duck's back. I mean, I used to, I used to live for the comments on Facebook and the news at World Bay made me suicidal and, and the mirror, all the newspapers, they were vile. Were you reading and, it all and... Yeah, and, yeah. Because I, I get a bad I mean, comment I, I'd read it and I'm like, and you start, you start believing what you're reading. Yeah. You're real. I'm actually going through a, a lawsuit. I can't go into it too much, but I've had to go back from 1998 all the way from 2011 and read all the articles. And it was literally like, like start off with this famous girl. She, and I'm reading the story and then I know when the Mark Croft era is coming and the fear in your bill. And it, I literally went back around to your presence, reading back. Just made you relive it all yeah, and drag like, it all up. When I moved back up north, I mean, I'm only just starting to settle down now. I had anxiety. Moved back up north. Like, I was just like, <gasps> I was on edge all the time going, oh my God. And then like, because where I live down south, like there's no paps out like that. It was great. You know, in all the edge, walk out the edge. I was like, <laughs> I thought, oh my God, I don't like it. Don't like it. And plus I do my own pap pictures. Why are you making fucking money off me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shame in it. No shame. Is that how it works? You sell oh, it and massively. the pap actually come Yeah, if I'm going on holiday and it's like, you want bikini pictures, right? Get the exclusive. Because otherwise you'll end up with like five paparazzi out there. You won't get any rest and they all make money. Yeah. Why should they be making money off me, my body, my face? Face. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. So it's like, right, we'll do pat pictures. I want my percentage, I'm not telling you what it is, <laughs> and you get yours. And I think that's a fair deal. And do you think the papers lie then? Because I think most <laughs> people would love I to think hear that. The whole, I think we've been lied to our whole lives. This is what I think about Prince Harry. I've listened to his audio book. He doesn't say anything bad about his dad, his brother, nothing untowards. It's full of love. And the way the papers make it out, I think there's a thing in it where he goes, oh, evil, wicked stepmother Camilla. When you actually hear him say it, he goes, we thought she was going to be this, but when my dad started marrying her, that's who we should have married the first time around. You know, they're meant to be together. But the way the papers describe it- And most it, people won't listen to the book. They'll no, just take the headlines. Yeah. And that's what it is. I mean, mm. I don't, I mean, I could be, but I know how people get brought into it. Um, reading a magazine, you know, I read something about Katie Price. She's one of my friends. And I'm, oh, fucking hell. Oh my God, can't believe that. Oh, that's it. She's ruined herself now. Oh, that's terrible. Turn the page, read something about myself. Go, that's a lot of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you, you get sucked into it. Yeah. So I get it. And the one thing I learned is it's escapism for Joe Public. Yeah. It's escapism for someone like me. You'll read something about somebody else. Even though I know it's bullshit, you get sucked into it. Because for some reason, as society... It takes us away from our own downfall. It makes you feel better about your life. It's like like Jeremy Kyle, isn't it? Watching someone that is having drama makes you feel better about your life. I know I felt dead normal watching that show. Mind you, I've been on Jeremy (laughs) 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 Kyle. I've been on. (laughs) But yeah, I think um, the media are just so full of shit. And unless it's an exclusive interview, and it's my quotes, and I've done the interview myself, 
Then believe it. Or a bikini it. shot on a beach. No, 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 no. The story's not mine. The pictures are. Yeah, okay. Whatever goes with the story, I don't do. I so just they can just write, write what they write. want. I don't care. Write what you want. Don't give a shit. She doesn't bother me anymore. Water off a duck's back. So no, it's bullshit. Yeah. I want to talk about your success a bit now because okay. I think most people are surprised when they, you know, this is a nice house we're in. Like you say, there's a Lamborghini on the drive. I've always had nice houses, even in bankruptcy. How? How does that happen? Because most people because think you go back on Because bear in mind that I earn a lot more than most people, so I'm mm. allowed to take more home in a month. Mm. So, you know, you have your, your monthly that you're allowed to yeah. take. So because of certain things, I, and depending on how much you owe back, yeah. you know, I earn a lot more than most people because of what I do for a living. Uh, but I've always just worked really hard, mm. even in bankruptcy. I've never stopped working. I'm a grafter. No one will ever take that away from me. And I keep thinking, it's definitely rubbed off on my other children. Heidi, my 16-year-old, she's a different specimen altogether. Uh, she wants to be Kylie Jenner, married to a footballer and have a wardrobe full of Birkin bags. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what a fucking bit. I didn't know what Louis Vuitton was until I was in my 20s. You know, when yeah. I was like dating Brian, my kids were like, I can have a Dior. What? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, it, like, even my nine-year-old, you know. It, I didn't have social media though. I yeah, have I mean, media. and I have spoiled them, and I don't. I and that's. I'm not no, no shame in it whatsoever. I just want them to have everything. So, you mentioned obviously you earn more money, so that meant you had money through the bankruptcy. But were there points where you didn't have money? Yeah, yeah, loads of times up until I met Ryan. Actually, like five years ago, like the first lockdown. Even though I've been out of bankruptcy now for what thirteen years, mm. or something. I mean, my credit score's nine nine nine. Ah! <laughs> I know I've been offered a mortgage. How yeah, amazing is that? You know, that actually made me cry. I lost my houses, lost my cars. And that was in 2008. So last year or the year before, I was like, yeah, you can get a mortgage. And my credit score is 999. I was like, oh my God. You know, that, that for me is a massive achievement. Um, but yeah, there were times, I remember when I was with uh, my manager and my money would go to him and then he would give me pocket money. Right. So I always end up getting myself in these situations where like, people set control of my money. I ain't got a clue what's going on. But I used to ring up, especially in the summer, go, uh, I... Uh, I won't say his name. Roger. Hey, Roger. Uh, can I have some money? Please get some school uniforms for the kids. So, yeah, that, it was really bad. I remember Ryan lending me five grand. I've never borrowed money off of anybody. And then he lent me uh, 5,000 pounds just to get me through. Do you think that's the root of the problem then, trusting other people with money? Like, would you say that's the theme throughout your yeah, bankruptcy I think, and stuff? No, I don't think it's just trusting people. I think I get took advantage. I like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Mm. I don't like to think there's like no beds out there. Do you know what I mean? And I think as well, when I was with this management as well at this time, I wasn't getting any work and I, I didn't understand why. And he told me it was because I was always going about mental health and that I found God. And, you know, I was like, this that's bullshit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It, it weren't deep that. But yeah, there was times where I used to ask, ask like me more and more, don't cast on I wonder where I got to do food shop. Danielle, you know Danielle Brown? Yeah. Melby's sister. Yeah. Like, I remember her coming to my house and she did a shop for me, brought me bread and milk. And yeah, there was times I really, really struggled. But you just got to do what you got to do. It must feel great now then. Like I know you've had a lot I of success. I don't spend anymore. Obviously, I've got the nice car, I've got the house. Mm. That's it. Everything else goes on the kids. Do you know what I mean? I'm very lucky. I've got my own boutique, Carrie's Boutique cardigan, dress. If you want to go check it out, yes. <laughs> Carrie's Boutique. Um, so, yeah, I think there was a time as well that um, I, I wanted to prove a point by buying like loads of designer gear, like going, look, I'm back. I'm back. But yeah. I thought, you better than that. So it took me a while to go, you know what? That's don't prove anything. It, it, it can get scary. And then it's just like, look, be sensible, Kara. Like like this house, I can't wait for, for us to move. I won't mind half the size of this house. We'll think about moving to Spain next year. Um, four beds, you know, we don't really use the cinema room to get my kids to sit and watch a film with me <laughs> or even TV. You know, they all go the separate ways. They're all on their own tablets. Do you know what I mean? You don't use cinema room, you know. Uh, obviously, we've got the gym down there and we've got the boutique down there and I don't really use this room. We use that side of the house and it's just like a you waste. You the security like, That never gets used in yeah. there, apart from Christmas Day when we had food in there. It was all fucking freezing. <laughs> um, so you yeah. want the security more, like you said I, about yeah, fear of losing it. Me, it you yeah, know. I mean, we moved in it in a rush decision because we got robbed at the last house we was at. They took our cars and I got into a panic because I got held hostage when I lived in Wimslow by three masked men. So I was just speed work up right this shit. And they had a sledgehammer knife a carving knife and a butcher's hook and oh they're all God. about clavers on. That triggered me massively. So this has got a safe room. 
Right, okay. Oh. So it was like, right, that, like, you know, I've got, it's like a bank door. Like, like a bedroom. panic room. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that, that's why I moved in here as well. And it's, I love it. It is really home and landlord's amazing and stuff like that. But next year I said, look, let's be safe and wise. Ha- cut our, our goings in half because we don't need to. And just, you know, get a house that, we actually, I mean, I'd never get a pool again. I've had houses. I've had three houses with swimming pools. Never get swimming pools. All well, in Spain, obviously. But I'd never get, if I was to say in England, I won't get a pool right like that again. Ever. The novelty wears off. The cinema room, the kids don't use it. They cost a load to heat as well, the pools, oh, don't they? Oh, yeah. I sold my Rolex to so pay for it. Heated on that. Really? Eight grand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of your Rolexes, yeah. Do you, now you say you don't spend as much, do you invest a bit now? Yeah, invest in me. Oh. Yeah, I've got my own companies. I set up my boutique. I don't invest in anybody else but me and my ideas. That's great. Well, I know. Um, do you mind us talking about the Odin fans thing? Because I know no, that's, that's like all. transformed your life. Tra- Come get self signed up there, fellas. <laughs> I'm women. I don't care. She's been doing loads of research. Get up there. Get up there. <laughs> yeah. Have you been tugging away off Willow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Demo stitched me up. Are you pushing? Are you I did nothing of the sort. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> he's like, he's worse than the media, isn't he? He's like, all these There's newspapers. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing Listen, wrong with it. I remember what, I remember doing, I was working with a famous footballer. I won't say who it was. He was like, oh, I've never seen that shower video. I, what? what? <laughs> and he, he clearly said, oh, the amount of times I wiped my phone screen from you. Oh, oh my, I just didn't know God. how to handle it there. And then I went, Oh yeah, that's great. Right, you're not gonna believe this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you took it well, but the annoying thing is, people assume that because you sell it, that they can then comment in person. And no, that's, but that's the not thing right. is, as well, I've never slept around. Like, I remember yeah. having a conversation with another celebrity. He's like, you know what it's like having a threesome, don't you, Kara? No, no, I don't. I've never <laughs> done anything like that in my life. I'm actually quite conservative, believe it or not. That's always been a job. That's what I do. I've modeled, do you know what I mean? It's like doing an acting role. It's like Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise doing a sex scene. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They don't get fucking judged. Yeah. So why do I get judged? You know why? Because I'm a council state. Yes, yeah, spot on. Do you know what I mean? You look at- That's his art. Yeah, it was right, art. Yeah. I was like, oh darling, yeah, let's, yeah, give, it, let's yeah. give it an Oscar. Yeah, that was brilliant. And I'm not I'm not doing anything that extreme. Mm. All I'm doing is standing there with my tits out. And some foot And shots. I get judged. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to fucking in it. But it is, you get put in a, a category, in a box, because I'm a working class background, because I didn't go to Sylvia Young style, because I'm not a thespian. And, you know, but I've done my own training and experience. Do you know what I mean? I've done it all myself, but I get judged because of who I am. Because of the papers from back in the day, everyone feels like they're allowed to judge me yeah. because it's Kerry Katona. Yeah. So we can judge her because it's Kerry Katona. Yeah, I heard you say that you're like the, the British Britney Spears, and I thought that's yeah. so true. Yeah. They just love to like batter you down. That's what got yeah. nicknamed. At the time, at the same time as her having her meltdown and mm. stuff. But it's just like, what gives you the right to judge me because of what I do, you know? And I, before I started doing OnlyFans, I sat the kids down and I told them all, they keep going, mum, just go all the way on it. We'll make millions. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm very, very open with my children. Yeah. The first photo shoot, the first pictures I did was in a black lace bra and knickers. And it was in the bedroom and I'm Molly, my eldest. She's setting up the lighting, the camera, Ryan's putting all this baby oil on Family me. business. Well, that's nothing, that's no different than me doing a photo shoot with OK Magazine. Mm, yeah. Do you know, I did a photo shoot in like suspenders and little, little Elvis for OK Magazine and Max and Heidi stood next to me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it, like, it's like, but that's OK because it's for OK Magazine. And all the people who judge you, like there's not a man in this country care. that doesn't consume that content. Well, you know what? It's more men. Like, yeah, if, crazy. I get, if I get any comments on Instagram, it's always a bloke, mainly yeah. Bloke, yeah. And especially they go, oh, you drug it. Oh, have a line, Kara. You know what I mean? It's like, you're, you're the kind of people who are doing drugs. Yeah. Do that's what I was mean? about to say. The worst thing, the people who are judging, they've all, they're half of them, well, the majority the of them probably don't do oh, yeah. coat themselves. And I can tell for a while. It's like, yeah, have a line, rack them up, babe. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? It's like, no, I've been clean for 13 years, but it's just like, do you... Who are you, you, you to judge me? You know, I don't care. I've done loads of drugs. I had a great time on drugs, but I nearly died as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I won't recommend so it you, to anybody. Have you been clean for 13 years? Yeah. See, this uh, the newspapers wouldn't tell you that, would they? No, oh, it's they not celebrated, keep, is keep, it? Yeah, they, keep, keep, they, they just want to keep you. They, they don't care if, if you are or not. I've never, ever been off my head on national television despite this morning into it. That was pure bipolar medication. I've got no reason to lie. I've shoved lo- loads of coke up my nose over the years. I've drunk until cows come up. I've got no reason to lie. Yeah. Why would I lie about that? Yeah. Do you know, and the way I was treated about my mental health on that was just horrendous. 
That made me suicidal. Yeah, the, the clip is that you were high on this morning and yeah. there's no conversation around the fact that it was bipolar so medication. I sat th- no, I told him. Yeah. So I've sat there. So for me, I was on clopromazine. I ta- I've got ADHD anyway. And um, I, not that I slow my words. I don't pronounce my words properly anyway. Like the, the rounded out anyway. And in the morning, sometimes I couldn't even tie a shoelace. And when, every time I went back into it prior, everyone thought it was a drugs. It wasn't. It was because I had bipolar and it was called trial and error to find the right medication. I was pregnant with my son, Max, at the time. You know, and I remember being on this morning and in my head I felt absolutely fine. I was tired because the night before we did a Keith Lemon um, celebrity juice, went straight home, took me meds about midnight, which I shouldn't have done. Gets up the next day, goes straight to this morning. And in my head, I thought I sounded fine. But it was a that was how I used to talk. Like, I used to do the ad- adverts at Iceland. We used to have to wait for the afternoon for my speech to kind of catch up with me after my meds the night before. And no one knew at this point, and this is 2008. I got diagnosed in 2005. I said, well, I've got an illness called bipolar. You know, my medication I took last night. Never once did they say, oh, what's bipolar, Kerry? And what's the medication you're on? Tell, tell us more about that. Are you alcoholic? No, I mark it. I had a panic. It's like, no, it's been medicated. I can't get over yeah. it. And I've got my reality show filming me on the set. I've got in the lift. I've just gone, I can't believe that's just happened. One of my aunties is bipolar and she has manic episodes where she yeah. spends lots of money. I, 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 is, exactly are you like that? Oh, I'm, I go a million miles an hour. Yeah. We go upstairs, look at all the bags. Did that help the diagnosis kind of think, this Don't is why I'm the way I am? Yeah, or? I, I, I. I cried. I didn't know what fucking bipolar was. So it was a sport. Was it then like it all makes sense kind of thing in terms of the way I am with no, money? No, and- I just, I just, I was just glad there was a name for it. Didn't yeah. know what it meant. Didn't know what it, you know. I first time got put on antidepressants. I think it must have been about seventeen when I first got in the when I first joined Tom McKit. I remember having a breakdown and having to go home and get put and gave me compassionate leave because I couldn't, ha- I couldn't handle the fame. I hated it, hated it, and that's why I. I, I don't know how you put up with it. Like now I use it to my advantage and the main reason I left Atomic Kids is because I didn't enjoy the fame because it was all about me all the time yeah do you regret leaving the no. group no 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 no. I did for a long time especially when Holy Girl went to when they went, when they got oh my god I'm not bitter at all don't be bitter <laughs> um, princess come on up here you coming up or are you getting out a little stretch yeah princess up good girl yeah, it must have been hard because they were quite successful at that point, but you found well, the success. Well, no, no, that rise. was it. We got, Hole Again was put on a budget and we were just about to get dropped and we begged them, can we just release Hole Again? And obviously I announced I was pregnant. I was with Brian. I was leaving the band. So we, that's when we were promoting Hole Again. So I had a lot of attention as well at the time. And then I officially left and it went to number one, but it was still my song. It was still my number one oh, because okay. it was my, yeah, my vocal. I was promoting it. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a, a video of me on live and kicking, you know, going, yes, I'm leaving the band. I'm having a baby. And that, and that was my last time I sang Hole Again on national television with the girls. And for a long time, I was quite bit because I just left, gave everything up and then moved to Ireland all by myself, pregnant. Why Ryan? Ryan, fucking Brian, who even let me Google it. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> can't keep up with that one? many. Um, why Brian was on tour. So that's why I taught myself how to read and write properly. Do you still earn money from Hole Again yeah. and that? Do you still, any, do you still get that? Any of my songs, yeah. Yes, I'll get money from that. Yeah. Still get royalties. If you could do it all again, would you? Would wouldn't you, change a thing. You wouldn't change a thing? No. You love the journey, you love I all the experiences. I have got no Bankruptcies, regrets. drugs, all of that. Because it's yeah. you. It's the what no mistakes have only been lessons. Yeah. I can't live with regret. I can't. Did you have any regrets in like, I know you said you've always worked, you've always had like loads of jobs. Have you ever done anything for money that you regretted? I did open leg shot once that I got corks into when I was 18 and I was devastated that I did that. I've never done anything like that before in my life. And now my mum used to be with me. And uh, yeah, that that was something I wish I didn't do. And what do you think's next for you? Like what have you got on the horizon? Apart from moving to Spain potentially. Yeah, uh, we're in the middle of a doing a screenwrite uh, scripts for the first book at the minute, turn that into maybe a possible movie or a TV drama comedy. Um, there's so much, I've got, I can't tell you a lot of stuff that's going on because that's fine. It, it's 
There's a lot of really, really big stuff going on. But you're busy, is the main really thing. Really busy. And you're enjoying it. Yeah, really busy. But that that's something else I have to learn to do because I'm not perfect. So I'm still learning. I mean, everyone thinks because like, you've got five kids, you know, all I'm learning something new every day as a mum. You know, I've got five kids, five different needs, five different wants, five different personalities. Mm. They all need me for different things. I'm learning something new every day from each one of them. And the one thing I'm learning about myself is I can't say no to work. I think that's a big problem of mine is I need to take time out and then my manager ring or this big show's come out. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on happiness and money because I think a lot of people are going to uh, look up celebrities. Money, money doesn't give you happiness. Money mm. gives you options. Yeah. I think it helps give you more freedom. Um, but happiness comes from within you as a person. You're the only person who can make you happy. I, I don't rely on Ryan for it my happiness that took me a long thing I was always waiting for somebody else to make me happy and I'm the only one you've got to be I think you've got to get to a certain point of a journey that it was like I can only make me happy it's down to me what's inside me nobody else because if you give anybody else your happiness to rely on it's going to get broken yeah be your own hero yeah and would you people say who do you you look up to who's been your inspiration I think me? Yeah. That's not... I've had to be my own hero because yeah. no fucker else was going to help me. No one's going to give me anything. I've had to do it myself. So I um, thank you so much for your time. No, and just for you being here. You. You're amazing. You, you are amazing. You don't care what we think, but we think you're a legend. Yeah, yeah, we think you're a legend. You are a legend. <laughs> <laughs>